Whew. God, it's cold, but the climbing involved to get where I am now uh, is quite excessive. That's why not many people visit this particular area. I don't know whether you can see behind me, but we've got a, a very steep valley on both sides. Very steep, it's pretty much just cliffs. It's the same in the other valley I've just come from as well. But this is where the steps were, all along the bankside, up there. That was about two weeks ago, and now they're absolutely knackered. I think their season is well and truly finished. So I've come back in the hope of finding some chanterelles or uh, amethyst deceivers or hedgehog fungus, which coincidentally I've just found here. That's them there. It's quite a few. They're all up there as well. And oh, where are we? Oh, yeah, I walked past another patch of them. Some down here, and there's some up in this little dark bit beyond the logs there. Oh, there's another one just there as well. So there is quite a few here. And there's also some down over the edge there. So I think I'm going to have to climb down into the stream and harvest those ones from the bottom. Yeah, some of these have been kicked over and they do attract quite a lot of muck because of these tiny little spines underneath them. See if I, I'll tell you what, I'll get a bigger one and I'll bring a bigger one in to let you see the little spines underneath. And that's where it gets its name from, hedgehog fungus. Actually, the brush might be better on those. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, hopefully, if that will focus. Ah, well, good. See all the little spines underneath? That's where it gets its name from, hedgehog fungus. It's quite meaty, pretty tough, and it's a good one to eat. You might be able to see there, those little spines just brush off. See them popping off there? You don't need to brush them off, but they will come off if you do choose to take them off. So, it's a nice little fungus. There's a few real beauties on this little bank side here and I've just found the world's most attractive mouse's nest. Look at that. What a cracking little mouse hole that is. You can see where it's shredded up all of the, the rotten timber. There's almost like a path going in. So you've got the little mousy hole there and then you, you've got it adorned with all these beautiful fungus. Now having a knife with a brush on, or a little mushroom brush just by itself, is pretty essential because all these little spines here just attract every speck of muck. So you very rarely get one of these lads without any muck on it at all. Obviously it's just general rotten wood and muck from the bottom of the wood, you can eat it, but it's more attractive if you take it off. And I'll, I'll put the link to this knife, which is an Opinel number no. 8 champignon, i.e. mushroom knife, in the video description and in the pinned comment. You get a normal version, and you get the version with the brush on. And because I'm absolutely hopeless at remembering where I put anything, if I've got a brush attached to a knife, and the knife is strapped onto the side of my basket, I can't possibly lose it. See, there's an example there. It's got a lot of muck on it. It's just loose, but if I try and rub that off my finger, it probably won't come off. So using this little brush, just brushes straight off.
Now picking these lads is way slower than picking the seps or other like big bold mushrooms because they just they just seem to attract all the muck you know so you've got two choices you can either harvest them quickly and throw all the muck in your basket and then funny about cleaning them later or you can clean them as you're cooking them uh, not cooking them or you can clean them as you're picking them and I prefer to clean them as I'm picking them because when I take them home and show my wife and daughter who these are for because they're having a, a mushroom risotto tonight um, if there's any muck on them they'll go uh, there's muck on them and they'll start washing them and all that which of course you don't want to do so if they're nice and clean they can just take them straight out the basket put them straight in the pan just found a few more underneath these big beech trees here see where I've taken them from and that's how many we've got in the basket now it doesn't look like much but there's a hell of a lot of cutting and cleaning gone into getting those and in amongst those I've got a few amethyst deceivers they don't taste as much but they keep the color when they get cooked and it's just a nice contrast you know the purple and the, the creamy color of the hedgehog fungus so that's going to be lovely in a risotto and while I'm here I've just noticed up the bank that there's a hell of a lot more hedgehog fungus and these ones are bigger I'll just zoom in from here and hopefully you'll be able to see them they're almost in a perfect line from where I am there you go right in the middle of the screen there look at these lads up there there's some absolute belters up there so when I harvest those that will make the basket look a bit more healthy it cleaned up absolutely beautiful another canny good one there very nice here's a wonderful little cluster of them look at that absolutely beautiful and when I'm getting them from a place like this, I always start from the bottom. And then anything that falls off them, it just falls down into the muck. If I start harvesting them from the top, anything that drops off them drops onto the next ones down, which makes cleaning them a little bit more time consuming. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, these just need minimal cleaning. Just a little quick brush, spot on. Yeah, so that's where we're at now. Quite a good haul. And obviously there's far too many there to put into a risotto. You know, I can hear you thinking, God, fatty, how many bloody mushrooms do you want, you know? But anything that doesn't get used tonight will go in the dehydrator. So it can be used, you know, anytime during the winter. And I'm just looking up there and I've just found another amethyst deceiver. Just here. beautifully purple underneath very nice and when I'm looking for mushrooms if there's like an offshoot that goes off and this one is a, a dry stream bed if there's an offshoot goes off into the wood like this and it's got steep bank sides on both sides it's a cracking place just to wander up and look either side because quite often a lot of the mushrooms that we're looking for are easier to spot when you're on the same level as them or even when you when you're underneath them and you're looking up because quite often, you know, looking down onto that against the forest floor, it doesn't stand out, you know? Whereas if you see that from the side, 
it really stands out it looks just like a mushroom you know now here's an unusual one it's not edible but this is one of the best things you can get for lighting fires with it's bone dry inside of this thing there's another one and another one these are called king alfred's cakes and I'll take a few of these, and when we get back, I'll show you just how easy it is to light a fire with these straight off the tree. Now you tend to get those grown on the underneaths of fallen logs and branches and so on. And because they're on the underneath, that's the driest part of the tree. And they just grow out of there. Funny looking things, I mean, wait, I don't want to say what that one looks like. <laughs> yeah. Now those King Alfred's cake fungus, the black things, are also known as cramp ball fungus and that's because way back in the day they would be used in some sort of tincture to stop people's stomach cramps. But when you see the inside of these fungus, you'll probably realise why. I mean it's pretty much just like a charcoal type of consistency and I would imagine that would draw in a lot of toxins inside the body. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> but that's probably where it got its name from. And then of course you've got the other name which is the King Alfred's Cakes and that's in relation to King Alfred who apparently burned some cakes or buns or something like thousands of years ago. I'm not familiar with that story. But what I am familiar with is the fact that those little cramp ball fungus are excellent for lighting fires with and all you need is a striker or even a flint and an iron to hit against it. You just need a tiny little spark and they'll catch a light and the heat that comes off them is incredible it's almost like coal I'll show you and then with the most feeble of sparky rods we'll try and light a fire in there That was straight off the tree, probably about 10 minutes ago. Super simple. Really, really simple way to light a fire and hold a spark. I mean, you can, you can continue piling little twigs and grass on top of that and blow on it. And you're going to get ages out of it, you know. And it, Hopefully you can see the, like, the concentric rings in there. It's really tightly packed stuff and it literally just is like... I don't know, it's like a cross between kindling and charcoal, you know? Yeah, that's super hot! Literally just burns like coal. Excellent stuff. Better put it somewhere where it's not going to catch my cabin alight. You know, if the worst does happen and everything falls apart and then has to be rebuilt, it'll be the people with the skills who are doing the rebuilding. The people without uh, any sort of skills will just be, well, in the eyes of the folks who are causing all the problems, they'll just be surplus to requirements, you know, and which sounds a bit harsh, but just that's just the way it is. You know, simple skills, uh, so easy to learn, you know, plumbing, electrics, I don't know, construction, you know, brickly and uh, anything. It, it doesn't have to be like outdoorsy stuff, you know, but the outdoorsy stuff, the likes of the fishing, shooting, trapping, hunting, uh, tracking, all that sort of stuff, the bushcraft, the survival related things, the recognition of wild food, all of that stuff probably will one day save your life if you ever get stuck in a tricky situation, you know. And, and having that, up here is a great feeling so I, I really just want to say to you guys watching this just invest time in yourself learn skills uh, uh, there's no downside to it you know there's, there's just definitely no downside to learning skills you, you learn a skill and you might you know more or less forget it but it, it quickly comes back to you you know it's a little bit like riding a bike or a martial art or something I did karate up to black belt and got the black belt and then the business kind of went crazy but 
I could step back in at that grade and pick it up just like that, you know? So it was a useful skill to learn. It's just another skill. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I know that my wife and daughter are gonna enjoy their mushroom risotto. And I think I'll get some of the dried seps out and I'll rehydrate those. I'll use the juice in the mushroom risotto. They're gonna have a proper, proper feast. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, and if you wanna check out the basket or the knife or the couple of books that I use, which I haven't shown yet, which I will show in another video, uh, one is called Mushrooms and the other one is called Food for Free. Both little books, cost about a fiver each, absolutely excellent. That's what I've got in that little leather case that's strapped on the side of my foraging basket. Really good books, I would highly recommend them. As I say, I'll do a video separately on those very shortly, but I will put the links to them in the video description. Again, I'm rambling, see you next time.